This is a nice way to start the week. I appreciate you stopping in. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday, December 4th. Now on this show, I like to share with you hot OTC and penny stocks. I trade penny stocks all through the day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. Well, over the weekend, I was doing some research and due diligence. Surprise! And I came across a stock that caught my attention. This is CBIA Cannabis Biopharma. But she's not a biopharma. She's not a biotech. She doesn't work with drugs at all. This company went through a change of control back in March. After they completed the change of management, one day later, they made an acquisition. They acquired Blue Heaven Coffee. And that's who they're doing business as now. Now, it was the chart that caught my attention. She has had a flood of volume coming in right now, but I almost walked away because of the price. When I saw it, it was at triple zero six. That is right at the threshold of where I will look at a triple zero stock. I normally will not look at a triple zero one to four because they just take a long time to move months and months and months, sometimes even longer. When they get the triple zero five, triple zero six, if there is a strong catalyst or the chart starts to set up, you can see what I like to think of as a hiccup bounce. It'll jump from triple zero five up to double zero one or double zero two real fast. That is a 100 to 400% gain real fast. And that's what we're looking at. The stock has already broke out over the 200. It was its initial breakout. She's come back down and she hit a solid SMA. I think it looks good with the merger just happening and they just put revenues on the books for the very first time. I think it's a good time to look at her. CBIA finished today. <laughs> it's moving around here. At 0005, she is currently 23% down today. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got both of those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. These are good folks. This is validated information. You don't get a lot of validated information with pinks. You don't get a lot of validated information with the OTC. That's the problem with it. So whenever we see a transfer agent verified and a verified profile with any stock, but especially a pink, you've got a good stock there. Now they tell us here the company is a shell risk. Well, they were a shell company until they made this deal. Well, this company's been in business for a while and they brought their revenues right on over. They're making money, so they really are not a shell risk. So what is this company about? Well, the description down here says that Cannabis Biopharma is now doing business as Blue Heaven Coffee, which is a provider of unattended and attended retail and digital advertising solutions. Our company specializes in providing client-tailored, profit-driven solutions backed by innovative technologies, powered in part by breakthrough artificial intelligence, state-of-the-art equipment, and top-notch service and support. It's kind of a vague description, I'll grant you that. The only specific detail we really got here is coffee. So let's start there. This is one of the company's websites, blueheaven.coffee, not blueheaven.com, blueheaven.coffee. I didn't know they had such a thing. So the company sells coffee, but that's not all they do. It's the start of what they do. It is the bait on the hook, which I'll explain here in a minute. Now the company claims they've got themselves a premium coffee here. Everybody claims they have a premium coffee. What makes theirs so different? Well, they say they grow it in Jamaica, in a region that grows to being real slow. So it matures at a different rate curates a different flavor, a signature flavor. That's what makes it a premium bean. Now, personally, I love coffee. I drink a lot of it. I drink eight, 10 cups a day, easy. And I'm not picky. I'll drink fresh brewed. I'll drink instant. It really doesn't matter. Now, there are variations from cup to cup, but nothing I'd get excited about. Nothing I would go out of my way to go get. But every now and then, I do get a cup of coffee that is outstanding. It is one that brings me joy, and I would go out of my way to get that cup of coffee. But what would I do if I could get that cup of coffee every day on my way to wherever it was I was going? 
I would buy it every single day. And that's what the company's got here. They've got a very special tasting coffee that they're not just selling in the bag to homeowners to take home, but they're getting it out to people in other ways as well. And we're going to talk about that. But first, I did tell you that the company had a change of ownership and a change of operations back in March. Let's start there. So I got a couple of news presses here that'll fill us in on what's happened in the recent past and where they're heading. The first one came out June of this year, gives us a nice overview of what's just occurred. The company has completed a reverse takeover merger and a change of ownership. The company is now doing business as Blue Heaven Coffee. The company has already received approval from Nevada for their name change. They got that in April. They've already applied to the OTC for their name and ticker change. We're waiting for that to be approved and finalized. Now, with the name change, they're going to be focusing on expanding their retail network across North America. This is a Canadian company. They're primarily focused in Ontario right now with 30 locations, and we'll get more into that here in a minute. With a track record of over five years in operation, the company has successfully generated positive revenue and currently possesses over $2 million worth of deployed assets. Now, taking a look at that other news press... This one came out just about a week later, June 27th. They tell us that in 2018, the company launched their flagship Blue Heaven Cafe. That's a picture of it right there. And as you can see, they serve high quality beverages, snacks, meals, and things like chapstick, tissue, you know, grab and go items. Now they've got three of these Heaven Cafe kiosks, but they've got 27 vending machine areas. Now you're thinking to yourself, vending machines? Really, John? Come on now, think about this. Vending machines have been around for decades. They are the original unattended retail business. And they've been around that long because they make money, especially if you get them in high traffic areas. Now, because we live in a new technological digital age, there is all sorts of room for vending machines to evolve. And you are already seeing it happen. No longer do we have to use paper money and change. We can use our debit cards, our credit cards, and soon we'll probably be able to use cryptocurrency. They, the company, and everybody else is implementing advertising into these vending machines. And this company is going to be doing it through AI. Now think about that. First off, the AI is going to connect all the machines, all their kiosks together. So you won't have to send somebody out to see what's low in this machine. The AI will know what's low and reorder it for you. But I come to this machine every day, right? It's on my way to where I'm going and I am picking myself an Almond Joy. I do every day. Well, today the machine recognizes me. The AI has been seeing me every day. I put in my debit card. It knows me basically. So today it gives me a personalized targeted ad. It says, John, we have just introduced Coconut Bliss in the machine next to you. They're cross-selling to me. I don't know how it's going to work, but they've got a lot of ideas and there is room to grow. Now they tell us down here that during their operations, the company's kiosks have consistently generated positive revenue and solidified their position as a prominent player in the continuously growing attended retail market sector. The company's vision now is focused on unattended retail. The company is currently working on plans to retrofit and upgrade their existing attended retail kiosk to cutting edge unattended retail models being powered by AI. Now they want to get involved with micro markets, robot kitchens, and unattended cafe kiosks, which are all self-service retail spaces that offer a wide range of products, such as snacks and beverages and prepackaged meals. But unlike traditional vending machines, micro markets are not limited to specific product selections and customers can browse and select items using a touchscreen kiosk or they can use their own mobile app. If you want to go touchless, you don't have to touch the machine. You can use your mobile app. Now, rather than tell you what a micro market or a robot kitchen is, they do that for us over here in their most recent financial. First off, they tell us that they are going to be infusing digital advertising platforms with all of these services, however they plan on doing that. First thing they talk about are those vending machines. The second one are robot kitchens. 
These are unattended, cutting edge, self-automated kitchen installations capable of sophisticated food preparations with high volume outputs. That sounds very curious. I'd like to see a picture of that. Now I have seen a vending machine that makes pizzas. It brings up a screen. You poke what ingredients you want. You can watch it automatically make your pizza, cook it and spit it out in about eight minutes like a winning ticket. It was neat. So there is room to grow in that market. Micro markets. This is a new concept that's taking fire, not just here in North America, but around the world. These are unattended self checkout solutions that enable consumers to shop in a store like setting. It's a lot like what you have at Walmart. If you don't want to go through the checkout with the cashier, you go through self-checkout. They've got machines. You just bring up your own items. But now they're evolving these micro markets using AI. So it's more like signing into a mobile app. When you walk through the door, you're walking through their entry system. The AI recognizes you by your picture, maybe a card you tap. In some way, it knows you. When you walk in, you walk around and get your items. There's nobody really in the store. Maybe someone's stocking the shelves. Maybe someone's sweeping the floor, but there's no cashiers. You put everything in the bag you brought or the bags they supply, and then you just walk out. These new AIs, they recognize you as you walk out, scan all of your products as you walk out. They can read all the tags on them, and then they charge you and settle up as you've agreed to do with them. Just that easy. And I can see this being hot and big in the future. They also are going into cafe kiosks. These are attended grab and go kiosks specializing in that premium mountain coffee. That's going to keep everybody coming back, right? I find a good cup of coffee. I'm going to make that my pit stop every single day. And while I'm there, maybe I'll buy a lottery ticket or maybe I need to use the ATM or pick up a bottle of wine. I'm coming home from work or pick up some stamps. They want to get involved in all of that. They also work with small businesses and companies that just want to bring in water coolers or coffee. But it's not just your everyday average water. They'll also bring in sparkling water or alkaline water. And of course, you know they're going to be bringing in their premier coffee, their Blue Heaven coffee. So this is what they're doing. They're working with vending machines in hot areas. But where are they working in them? Now, this is key, folks. They are working in one of the hottest areas. They tell us here that the companies confident that these solutions represent the best way to move forward, adapting the market to market changes and addressing challenges and situating the kiosks for longevity and continued success. You want to put these up where they're going to stay for a long time. You don't want to put them up in malls. Malls keep crashing. They keep going out of business, right? So where are you going to go that you know is going to be in business for a long time? They went to Via Rail in Canada. As far as I can tell folks, this is the largest passenger train in operation in Canada. They cover the entire country, including Ontario. And this is where they have their 30 locations at 30 depots. And as far as I've been able to see, they've got about 450 depots at Via Rail. That's a lot of room to grow. And is Via Rail going to be going anywhere in the next five or 10 years? Probably not. And because it's not a private business, it is government controlled. This is a government contract. Right there, the company is bolstered by its establishment of government contracts, which not only enhance the company's financial stability, but also help pave the way forward towards future growth and expansion opportunities. So they got a lot of growth. They can build these vending machines up. They can open up these micro markets. They are at via rail, which is going nowhere. So they're going to be there for a very, very long time. I see this as a growing company. Let's go get some information over at the OTC markets now about the stock. First thing we're going to take a look at is the relative volume for the company's stock. CBIA on an average has been doing about 130 million shares over the last 30 days. Today, she did more than double that at 272 million. Now, to be honest, that average is not giving you an accurate picture of what's actually going on right now. I'm over here at Yahoo Finance. You go up underneath historical data, you can see the volume for every single day. The open, the close, the high, the low. Well, here's December 4th. Today, we had 272 million shares. Look at Friday, 547 million. 
Look at Thursday's 939 million shares, almost a billion shares, folks. Now look, the whole entire OTC market today did 4.6 billion shares. This one company on that day did almost a billion shares. So just to make it easy, that's about one fourth, one fifth of all the shares. Out of 12,281 companies, this one company got virtually one fourth, one fifth of all the shares on the entire OTC market. How can you not put your eyeballs on this company? Taking a look at the share structure, we got a lot of shares, outstanding share counts at 2.2 billion. The insiders, they own a lot of them, about 600 million, and we get all the rest, 1.6 billion. Looking at the financials, on the annuals, we have absolutely nothing, but on the quarter, we got something. First time we have revenues on the books, 273,000, and they got to take home $191,000. So, as you can see, they are not a shell risk company. Taking a look at that balance sheet. Cash and cash equivalents, we've got $372,000. Total assets, $791,000. Liabilities are way down there, just under $200,000, which gives us positive stockholder equity of just under $600,000. I'm happy with that. Checking out the company's disclosures. We don't have anything here since September, so let's just pop on over into that news. Now, we do have some news here back from 2014, back for the original Cannabis Biopharma. We're not going to look at that. <laughs> and then we've got three pieces of news for the new Blue Heaven Coffee Company. Two of them came out in September. One came out in November. The company announces PepsiCo Distributor Partnership Beverage Agreement. So they're getting the Pepsi products in their machines now. The other one from September, the company announces that they had secured a $1 million strategic venture capital financing. That's always good to hear. And then at the end of November, we had this piece of news. The company is thrilled to announce the recent deployment of nine new generation artificial intelligence powered digital vending machine units dispersed over nine distinct high traffic Canadian locations situated across multiple provinces so now they're not just in Ontario anymore. These strategically located high traffic, high impact sites will serve as proof of concept deployments towards the completion of the company's overall goal of dispatching 100 plus units across Canada within the next six months, effectively creating Canada's largest unattended retail programmatic advertising network. Now, most of this information is about that advertising how they're going to help companies make money, how they can target their customers better and get the most value for the money that they're investing. As part of its expansion plans, the company intends to swap out older digital and non-digital machinery for this new cutting edge line of AI powered technology alongside of the upgrading of the pre-existing network of unattended and attended retail solutions located in North America. And I'm sorry I couldn't find a better picture, but that's the best picture I can find. They supplied that. It is that yellow box, the M&M ones with a huge screen on it. That's the one they are now putting everywhere. So the company's moving outside of Ontario now. They haven't moved into America yet, but they're spreading across Canada. We know they're at Via Rail. We don't know where these other high impact locations are, but I see the company is growing. They've got a plan to do it and you just heard it. They want to get a hundred of these machines out in the next six months all over Canada. Plus they're expanding at Via Rail. They're going into the micro markets. So there's a lot that they're doing and the chart is set up right now for a nice bounce and we could get a hiccup gain, one to 400% gains just like that. Let's go take a look at the chart. Let's take a look now, ticker CBIA. We're gonna chart this bad boy on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. This is a six month, four hour view. And as you can see, there is a tsunami of volume coming into the picture right now. Now, about six months ago in May, we hit our high of about 22 and a half cents, and then she fell really fast and hard down to double zero four. 
That was an incredible fall. But she wasn't done falling. She went into the triple zero zone, hitting the basement floor of triple zero one at the end of October. And again, she just continued down there until the 200 started getting close. Then Rip Van Winkle woke up. From this spot here to this spot there is a 300% run. Triple zero two to triple zero six. And there's no middle ground between these numbers. From two to three, that's the move. There's no center ground there. And once she hit that high, she just went sideways until the 200 got closer and started leveling out. You see that, right? And she broke through. Now, this isn't a breakout, it's a breakthrough. She's breaking that ice, getting it broken out. Now she's come back down. She's landed on a very strong support, the 50-day SMA, and we're hoping that she's going to push off of that like a, like a diving board and launch herself up over this 200 and then start to run. Our oscillators, our PPO is a bit cool. It's just going sideways. Our MACD had a negative crossover two days ago and is pushing down. And our ISI four days ago came out of the overbought and she's down at 46 right now. A bit cool on our oscillators. Looking at our 20 day one hour view. So we're down here on the floor, triple zero one. She is sitting on our 200 day haul. I keep telling you about that 200 day haul. The penny stocks love it. If you haven't got it on your charts, you can add it. Once she got near the 200, she took off, came down, landed on the 20 and bounced off of that flying on her nine day SMA up to that high of 0018. Then for the next three days, she's come all the way back down, but she is sitting firmly on that 200. One, two, three, four, five bounces, five tests. This looks like she doesn't want to go under. She's making sure it's strong before she jumps. We don't even have a tinge of coming underneath that 200. Now our oscillators, they're not looking any better. Our PPO is still going down. Looks like it has a chance of recovery. She's flat right now. She has gotten level. Same thing with our MACD. We've had a big downfall over the last few days. Right now, it looks like she's about ready to change direction. And our RSI got way low down there at 35, and it's coming back up right now at 41. Checking out that five-day, five-minute. Lots of volatility. And I can see we have just come right back home here, haven't we? She went all the way up from this triple zero four up to double zero one eight. You're looking at a 450% run right there. I think that's right. 450% run in two days. Then she came down crashing through the 200 landing exactly where she started from tagging it. We got a big green bar right there. I like that. She's pushing up, came down, hit this support, and she's pushing off of it, getting over the 50. This looks like she's getting ready to launch. On our oscillators, we finally have a crossover on our PPO pushing up. Our MACD is now crossing the signal line, and our RSI is a bit planted. It is right there at 52. So I see potential, folks. You don't have to put the house down on this. A $100 bill could make you two, three, four hundred bucks. But down the road even, I see this company wanting to saturate Canada. I can see them expanding into the US. And who knows all that they're gonna do. As things go forward, they're gonna just keep getting bigger and bigger. But folks, I didn't do all the due diligence. You know that. So go do some more due diligence. Convince yourself what this company has to offer. I like them. Don't forget, just last week, this company had one-fourth, one-fifth of all the shares on the OTC market. It's worth putting on your watch list. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.